Hi and welcome back for another Late Night at the Drawing Board. Tonight I'm going to take a look at doing a double page spread and when I do this I'm looking for several different things since this one has a bunch of dialogue in it and it's got some big action that I have to try and figure out and I'm looking for a way to get one big image to kind of come across both pages. You can see I do a lot of moving around of thumbnail sketches and just trying to put down some quick ideas and not spending a lot of time just doing something really rough for placement and scale and positioning and this is a process that goes on quite a bit to try and find what's the right flow or rhythm for the visual language that I'm trying to get across and also trying to design it in and around the text areas. These late night drawings are always after a full day of doing the regular studio work and client work and this here is another spread from a passion project, Tiki Trouble, which is making its way through the studio and nearing completion. And I've been working on it for a while and you know the way passion projects are, you have to work on them in between all your regular jobs and clients and everything else. But the main thing is you gotta keep working on it with the goal to finish it. So there was a lot of text for this double page and there's a lot of action and I wanted to try and figure out okay well how am I gonna get this to flow from one page to the other but yet I need I need one big grand epic image that encompasses the really big scene with this whole uh, horde of boats and um, uh, rescuers that are coming over this uh, wave that's being manipulated in a supernatural way by our villain and yet there's a couple of cut-ins because there's some important dialogue going on between our villain and some important dialogue going on with our hero and uh, and the rescuers so I was trying to figure out okay well maybe we can do a couple of spot illustrations and figure out some type of visual language for the big wave spread so I was having some fun but yet it was a little bit challenging you're gonna see some of that here as I pull this through You see some of my references are popping on and off here. References always really important to have no matter what you're doing, no matter what story you're working on, no matter what type of image you're, whether you're making something up or working from something that's factual or historical or even just from imagination, it's always important to utilize references. So with all my drawings, they go through the same process. I do the quick thumbnail sketches, then I do not a total tie down, but gives me enough information to know kind of what's there, what's the object. I do a lot of sculpting of the, of the line and trying to get the most out of it dimensionally. I always draw through the characters. I think that's really important. And I know a lot of that art gets covered up later on with the layers because you get overlays and underlays and things like that. But it's always best to draw through just so that you make sure that you have everything positioned as correctly as possible. For this particular book, uh, we went with a really kind of uh, inky, sketchy line for Tiki Trouble, and now I'm just gonna go in and try and start tying it down. It's a lot easier to do what would be my ink pass after I've done the first two passes of scribbles. So it may sound like I'm doing it three times, and, and I am, in some cases, maybe even a little bit more. It's always fun to try and figure out how to get the image that you want to see to work and fit within the negative space of what's actually available on a page. When doing a layout, you're looking for a visual flow something that will keep the viewer's eye moving to where you need it to go next. And when you're crossing over two pages, you have to get creative sometimes because if you're also trying to fit in some spot illustrations, you want to make sure that the visual flow matches the way that the story is being told. 
so you don't jump ahead and you're like oh wow it builds up and even though you could see it all in one shot when you open the double page spread it's important to try and match that storytelling flow and guide the viewer's eye even though there's a lot of text on the spread there's also a lot of line mileage because there's a lot of little characters and there's a lot of information and when you do it at a high resolution you can really appreciate those little characters the special edition of this particular book is a very large format book so a lot of that information will be visible in the final art which is nice i think the smallest this book will be produced is about eight and a half by eleven and the largest being i think like ten by thirteen or something like that whenever you have a lot of characters you gotta be careful of a lot of tangents so Again, you hear me say it a lot. I'm always looking at negative spaces. I'm looking at what is a nice area for the character to read in. You know, I'm trying to balance the amount of page real estate. And then I'm trying to balance the real estate and negative space within each image as well. So that's why there's a lot of sculpting going on. When I say sculpting, it's, it's you know, I'm, I'm using warp tool, I'm, I'm skewing things. If this was on paper, I'd be drawing over and over, over on top of the paper. And with digital, you can cut out the images and move them around and really kind of get them to, to fit and work before you go in and start spending all the tie down time. With a spread like this, this actually does take quite a while. This is a speed drawing, but this is a lot of information I'm trying to get across. And, and even after I do get it all tied down with the line art, with what would be my cleanup, then I'm going to go back in. I'm going to look for the light sources. I'm going to try and work with the tonals as much as possible before it gets painted. It's always tricky when you're trying to depict an epic moment. And there's just no other way to show the scale or the grandness other than to represent it somehow. So I would have loved to have been able to draw even more characters and more boats, but you know you only have so much space to get it across. But you can't draw too little either, because then it just doesn't match what's supposed to be happening in the story. One of the things I was trying to do here is to get a bunch of information that's seen through the bridge window of the ship. I'm always a big fan of illustrators of the past and they've made such beautiful pieces of art just with how they even vignetted the storytelling moments and I think that's always really nice I love that organic feel of the vignettes I try and keep it to pretty much three key tones for the most part. I'm working with a default gray tone and then I hit it with a highlight and a shadow pass. And there's some subtleties in between there, but that's kind of the quickest way for me to get an idea of what's going to be in light or what's light over dark or dark over light. Not everything's going to be figured out perfectly, but it at least gives me a really good sense of the areas that I want to portray stronger than others. Working with pools of light is a really good way to do that. But if you are working with those pools of light, you want to make sure that you're utilizing some type of light source. In this case, I'm using the lightning a lot in order to generate a light source. This particular moment's kind of at, at twilight hour, so there's not a lot of sunlight, per se. Now I'm feeling like I'm in a pretty good spot. I'm really just trying to move through this monster and, and get through these shadows and, and shades. And, and uh, again, I'm doing my over and unders, even though some of the stuff's going to get covered up. I know it will be, but 
that's just the way I've been trained and I I do like being able to to have that whole image there because it, it gives me a better sense of of what's there in terms of its scale and placement the other benefit to having a lot of these characters finished out uh, underneath other characters sometimes is that as you can see I move stuff around all the time so I'm constantly moving them around it allows for additional flexibility to maneuver the boat a little bit more and and there's art there already or move that character back a little bit more and the dress is still there you get a little bit more benefit out of having a full character illustrated sometimes just because if you're moving them around a lot so it's really important to have it at this stage because the characters are being finalized pretty much where they're going to be in that space but it's nice to have them to move around sometimes if you're still trying to work it out It's just such a great feeling when you go up to a bookshelf and you pull out a big old illustrated adventure story and you, you open it up and you get lost, not just in the storytelling, but you get lost in the art and it just becomes this immersive, creative experience. And I just love that feeling and I'm trying to do just a snippet of that here. And I hope you enjoy it too. Well, thank you again for, for peeking in and seeing some of my process and a little bit more behind the scenes of this particular passion project, Tiki Trouble, and hope to see you again. Stay safe and draw on.